A witch's altar is such an important space for so many practitioners, especially hearth witches or any witch who centers her practice within the home. They are a space for centering and grounding, for practicing workings or honoring the sacred, for whatever happens to be sacred to you. There are countless uses for a witch's altar, and countless reasons why you may want one in your practice. Because my own practice is centered in my home, I knew an altar space was something that I wanted. But since I've been taking time to settle into my new home, I didn't build one right away. I wanted a little bit of time to just settle into my practice and think about what I wanted to get out of my altar space. So finally, after months and months, the day came where it was time. Here she is. Here is my altar table. No, it's not an antique table or custom made or some table with a long and special history. It's just a table that I found online that suits my needs and that is perfectly fine. So first, of course, my cats had deemed the table okay for use, and once they had approved it, I went ahead and did a quick smoke cleanse with my favorite incense. I spent a lot of time looking at different altar cloths for sale online, especially through Etsy. It was important for me, if I was going to purchase one, to find one available from a seller that was hand making them. Though these days on Etsy, it's pretty difficult to find actual artists and not people who are just drop shipping, so I did end up giving up on that pretty quickly. Also because none of them really felt right, none of them had exactly what I was looking for, and had a representation of all of the elements of my practice that were really important to me. Although many of them were very, very beautiful, I felt like I was kind of wedging them into my practice to force them to fit, if I were to purchase one. I had spent so much time thinking about my altar space that I just really wanted it to be perfect and perfectly suited to me. So as an artist myself, the logical thing to do was to make my own altar cloth. I knew I wanted to make a design that was personal to me and to my practice, and that represented all of the things and all of the energies that I wanted to bring into it. What better way to achieve that than by making my own altar cloth? Luckily, I already had just such cloth sitting around. It was the leftover cloth that I used for my book cover when I created a book binding and a cover for my tarot journal. I swear I didn't measure it beforehand, but lo and behold, it was actually a perfect fit for the table. I looked through my art supplies and I hadn't actually ever picked up any paint markers that were meant for drawing on cloth, so I did have to go and pick up a couple of those, and I'm sure I'm going to be getting a lot more use out of those, I can already think of so many creative ways to use them. Once I had picked up those, I got to work. I first did the design digitally, just because this type of design is not something that I am super experienced in. I'm usually a portrait artist, so I wanted the freedom to just be able to play around and erase and redo things and reuse elements and move them around easily with the amount of flexibility that digital software gives you. Once I had completed the design, I probably could have printed it out on printer paper and found a way to fit it to my cloth. But I wasn't really feeling that just because I knew there were a few minor things that I wanted to change in the design when I transcribed it, so I just decided to freehand it. Also because I'm not really that patient and I really just wanted to go for it and get it done within a weekend, while I still had all of my excited energy. So I took my cloth and pinned it to this board I had. I put another support board behind it just to give it a little bit more structure and to pin the cloth around the edges of the board. I had some white water soluble paint pens, but I was actually unable to find them. I was hoping to use them to sort of sketch a transcription of the design onto my cloth, but since I couldn't find them, I just grabbed a gel pen and that worked just as well. Of course, the main symbol that I wanted in the center of my cloth was the pentacle, very classic. I also love the triple moon, it's one of my favorite symbols for a number of reasons. The triple moon can represent the goddess, as well as the maiden, the mother, and the crone, which represent the three phases of the female life cycle and liken it to the waxing and waning of the moon. This is sort of the classical understanding of the triple moon symbol. There's of course a lot more depth and history behind it as well. Along the bottom of the cloth, I drew a bundle of lavender, as lavender is one of my absolute favorite herbs to work with. It brings me so much peace and so much joy, and it's very, very important in my practice. 
Above the pentacle is the spiral goddess. Now, the spiral goddess is a very ancient symbol and it has a really rich history. Nowadays, you often seen it used in Wicca and paganism to represent the spirit, the source, the goddess. It's very commonly seen to represent the divine feminine as well. I am an atheist witch, which means that I don't practice with any deities. I am not a Wiccan and I am not a pagan. So while the goddess does not represent any literal goddess for myself, it still holds a lot of other personal meanings for me. It's also a really beautiful symbol. The borders of the cloth are decorative, either based on designs that I previously have made for myself for other projects, and some of them are a little bit inspired by sacred geometry as well. I think I could have used a lot more tools to try to make it perfectly symmetrical. That takes a lot of time, and I was really just going for it, and so I just kind of freehand a lot of things, so there are a lot of imperfections in the borders and such. But that's okay, that's not the kind of thing that bothers me. I guess I'm very not OCD in that sense. And in a lot of ways, it kind of adds to the charm just because I was doing this process in a way that was just fun for me, which meant not using a lot of rulers and tools and worrying about perfect symmetry and just enjoying the process of what it feels like to create art. So in a lot of ways, because of that, it just sort of adds to the charm and is a better representation of myself. I happened to be putting my altar together shortly before a dark moon, and I was intending to do a dark moon working, so that's a lot of the reason why the overall altar setup is so dark. Also, I mean, black is my favorite color, so there's that too. Since setting up this space, I have been using it for meditation, for grounding, and for doing daily tarot readings if I have time to do them, and it has been absolutely perfect and wonderful place for me to center my energies. I don't know how often I'll be sharing what my altar looks like in the future as it is intended to be a personal space just for myself, but for the purposes of just sharing what's going on, I thought it would be fun to share this process of creating it. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me through this process. Remember to be kind today to others as well as to yourself. I hope to see you very soon on the next one.